Well, and thank you for being here today, guys. This is such a busy holiday, and I know some of you had to rearrange everything just to be here, and we're so th pleased with that. We have a few more people still coming in. I'd like to play for you a video, uh, just a, a song with the words up on the screen. Now, the video may not be the style of music you like. You may think, well, it'd be better if it had a different vocalist, and that could be true as well. But what I'd like to do is I'd like for you to consider for just a moment part of the reason we get here. Of course, we come together to encourage one another, to see each other. I mean, that's important. And we're here to learn the Word of God. That's why we're always wanting to be faithful and clearly presenting the Scriptures. But part of the reason we're here is to encourage one another with our own testimonies of how faithful God has been. Oh, life gets turned upside down in just a few minutes, doesn't it? We saw that again this week with a young man from Casson who had a... Um, horrible drowning accident. We'll give you some words there that he is, seems to be showing signs of improvement and we're so thankful for that but just in a minute everything can turn. So we're going to give you an opportunity, just a few of you, if you'd like to share a word of testimony to the faithfulness of God. This is a song perhaps you've heard it on the radio. It's a song that I play often because as much as life hurts this is truth. Listen, if you would, to the words of this song. Well, good morning. We are glad that you're here with us this morning. As Bruce said, I know it's not very easy when it's kind of sprung on you that, hey, we'd, we'd like, to share how, like for you to share how God's been faithful. But before we do this song, and I'll stop in the middle of the song, if there's, a, if there's something that you want to share, because that's how... We know that our God is faithful, right? Because of the things that He's done. We, we, don't, we can't see Him. We can't um, you know, physically know for sure He's there, but we know that He's there because we have the Bible that says so, because of the things that He does in our lives and the way He takes care of um, all the things that we really have no control over. So before we sing, Great is Thy Faithfulness, um, is there anybody that would like to share something, how God has been faithful in your life this week, this month, this year? The last 50 years. Amen. Anybody else have something they'd want to share? About how God's been faithful? We have one back here. Very good. Amen. Amen. Anyone else before we start the first verse here? We'll break after the second verse before we go into the third if anybody else has got something. I see another hand back here. You stand with us. Great is thy faithfulness. We'll sing the first two verses and break if somebody's got anything else they want to share. Thou takest not thy compassion 
before we go to the third verse, is there anyone else who'd like to share how God's been faithful to them? Right here. Any more this morning? I just want to give um, God a praise for the, you guys are so wonderful with helping with Bible school. You don't realize how much I have said over Bible school. <laughs> 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 um, but I'm just blessed by God giving us these wonderful decorations we have in the basement from Crown Point Church. Any more? We need, we need one, one more, more so, so I can. can. Okay, okay, good. Another one over here, Hal. Yes, uh, about a year ago, we you know, visited my daughter and my son in law. And during that visit, he expressed to me that he wanted to become a minister. And uh, after that year lapsed, my daughter came home again just recently and informed me that he has taken over a year because their minister was in bad health in the hospital. So he was leaving this. We won't stop if they keep coming, so. <laughs> Any more? Okay. Third verse, great is thy faithfulness, and God is faithful. Amen. Heavenly Father, Lord, you are a faithful and an awesome God, and we thank you for, um, as we've just heard this morning, how many different ways you have been faithful, you have been, um, you have been th there for us, Lord. 
We know that you will never leave us or forsake us, that you're always there, that whatever we come to, we know you've already been there and that you will get us through it. We thank you for that. Um, Lord, today as we're here, there are a lot of, there's a lot of hurt and there's a lot of um, things that we deal with throughout our life and that, Lord, I pray that we would every day look to you because you make our, you are, you give us mercies new every day. Your grace is new and always sufficient. Lord, I just, uh, I am thankful for that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Should be greeted, shake a neighbor's hand. Tell him you're glad to see him here this morning. Good morning. Glad to see you Glad to see you as well. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hey. Okay, good. Okay, um, just a few announcements. Uh, please note that there'll be a baptism next week and then on the 24th. And if you're interested in that, please contact the church office. Um, there's still time to be included in the baptism on the 24th. Um, but we ask that you contact the church office. Um, next Saturday night, we're going to have a camp out for the youth group for junior and senior high boys out at Fred's Woods, the one where we have the fall party and all that stuff. So um, if you guys, I put flyers on the back table. If there's anybody who has any questions or needs more flyers or anything, uh, just let me know. Uh, it says here what to bring. It says each student is responsible for their own sleeping bag, blankets, pillow, and teddy bear. It says... Uh, Teddy bears as needed because you will not be allowed to call home to mommy. Now who writes this stuff? <laughs> it also says bring extra underwear. Oh wait, it's kind of important. If you're going camping, come on now. Okay, so uh, got a couple boys here that are going to be um, camping with us next week. So uh, be praying for them. Um, I guess we are, do you have an announcement for VBS? Okay. Anything else? Okay, we do have a prayer request and um, the back of this, we were talking this morning, the back of the bulletin is just packed full of familiar names and names that have been on there for quite some time and some very new, or very important new names um, have been added this week and, and as Bruce gave the updates, I just want to encourage each and every one of us to pray for those names and, and those people this week as we have a short week of work and um, just encourage everybody to continue to pray. Is there any updates that need to be added? No? Okay. If not, the ushers please come at this time. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we are so thankful for this place where we can come and worship you, Lord, and for this great country where where we can worship freely and we have our own liberty, that we can worship you not only in this church, but anywhere we please to go, Lord. And we understand the cost that it's that people have paid to preserve our liberty, Lord. And we just pray that you would continue to bless this great country as we celebrate our independence today, Lord. We just ask that your blessing would be upon us. Lord, We there's so many prayer requests 
that this church has brought before us, Lord. We just ask that you'd be with the Kinzer family and with Brandon's healing. And we pray that you'd continue to be with Scott Halterman and Bill Gearhart and Luann Connor. Lord, we ask that you'd be with Peggy Degg as well and Emily Ann as, as they continue to heal. Lord, there's just a long list there. And I also ask that you'd be with our shut-ins today. Lord, I ask that you would fill them with your Holy Spirit in a way that only you can so that they may know that you are still love them and you are still there for them, Lord. And we just ask that you take this offering that we give back, Lord, that it may be used to further your kingdom and your will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. One more prayer request real quick. Uh, um, Bruce had mentioned Roger and Selena Rao. Roger has um, his medication. The doctors are exploring a new medication for his cancer treatment. So um, please, please be praying for that and for them as they uh, try and figure out how to, to best handle that. So um, continue to pray for them. If you'd stand, we're going to switch a little bit, but it still talks about the faithfulness of God. Mine eyes have seen the glory, the battle hymn of the Republic. We have a God who has been faithful. If you look at the history of, well, of this country and how it got started and, and it's because of, of the, the wanting to be able to worship um, the way that, it's really the way that God's called us to worship and um, coming here and, and just, you know, going through all the trials, all the things that this country's been through and yet God has been faithful to us, God continues to bless us and every day um, we have to go out and instead of just, just instead of just doing the things that please us Ultimately, we do the things that give God glory because that's why everything happens. It's for the glory of God. And so um, as, as we, we thank the people who have fought for us, most of all, we thank God for the freedom that we have. Mine eyes have seen the glory. We'll sing all four verses. Oh, 
Hey, Amen. You may be seated. Bruce. And we'll dismiss our kids like we can make them stay if we wanted to. Oh, it's such a great thing. And thank you, Mom and Dad, for being so faithful to bring your kids. Well, visitors, we're so glad to have you here. We want you to feel right at home. Many of our people are out traveling on such a busy day. And we're always glad for, you, for some of you to get away. You come back refreshed. You come back in a much better mood. Hey, listen, uh, I wanted to just share one more word of testimony with you. I was talking to Bill Jones, and every at the end of June, every year is a very difficult week. That's when he and his wife and the family, many of you here, lost Lori. And his testimony was the, not only the great years they had, but the assurance of knowing that she knew the Lord. And really, that changes everything, doesn't it? I mean, that's why we come. We don't come because religious people are that cool. I mean, let's face it, many of us aren't really cool. I mean, some of us are even way past groovy. That's hard to imagine. I mean, we're way out beyond all that. We don't get together because we're religious people and we enjoy a convention. No, we get together because the Word of God has communicated to us this great gospel message that when we know Jesus Christ as our Savior, that our sins are forgiven, that eternal life is given to us. By God's grace, he extended forgiveness, and by our faith, we have received it. What a great thing. We've been taking our time walking through the book of James. It's a great book, very practical, one of the first books written in the New Testament era. <clears throat> and we're going to take a few weeks and deal with the topic of communication. Now, James speaks about our words, but now we know our words are so much more than just the words we share with one another in private or public conversation. Now, with Facebook and texting and all of the rest, that we have opportunities to communicate all day long, all night long. Just the other night, I got a call at 1.30, and you know what you do. You try to wake up at 1.30 in the morning and act like you've just been waiting for the call. Well, hello. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Shaking the head. And, and it was a young man going through difficulties and he says, Hey, were you asleep? <laughs> I wanted you to know I'm pretty spiritual because I, I wanted to say, Duh! <laughs> but no, I said, Yeah, yeah, but hey, what's going on? But... But we have tremendous opportunities to communicate all around the world and really all day and all night long. We live in a different kind of a day. So even though just our spoken words are the focus of James, let me ask, how have you done with your 175,000 words that you shared during this past week? That's not counting your texting and all the rest. On average, we have all used about 175,000 words. And that's really important because all it takes is just a combination of two or three to change a person's life for the good and for the bad. And that's why it's important that we give attention to what James says about our communication. So the th series has been entitled Communication, the Heart of the Matter. Today we're going to be looking in a few minutes at the words that wound. But here are the words we find in James and we'd like to add some of the words that Jesus shared. And it's always really important to make sure that we have a biblical framework in order to put our, our uh, message in. So let me just read to you, sit back and listen. They're on your notes. It says, understand this, my dear brothers and sisters. You must all be quick to listen, slow to speak, and slow to get angry. 
If you claim to be religious but don't control your tongue, you're, you are fooling yourselves and your religion is worthless. We can make a large horse go wherever we want by means of a small bit in its mouth. And a small rudder makes a huge ship turn wherever the pilot chooses it to go even though the winds are strong. In the same way, the tongue is a small thing that makes grand speeches. Dear brothers and sisters, many of you should, uh, many of you, not many of you should become teachers in the church, for we who teach will be judged more strictly. Indeed, we all make many mistakes. For if we could control our tongues, we would be perfect and could also control ourselves in every other way. Jesus said these words, speaking of false teachers, but you can see the application here. A tree is identified by its fruit. If a tree is good, its fruit will be good. If a tree is bad, its fruit will be bad. For whatever is in your heart determines what you say. That's where we made an emphasis last week. That the problem isn't just the tongue... It's what's in the heart because what's in the heart is what the tongue reveals. In fact, you'll see a quote here I thought was pretty good. You constantly and continually deliver messages that reveal the true disposition of your heart. It's not just what you say, but the way you say it. In fact, Jesus follows his uh, discussion about speaking with this. He says, but the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. So we've talked about that, what's in the heart, and that's why it's so important for us to deal with more than just rules. We can't have just three rules that keep you from saying something stupid. No, you're going to need a lot more than that. Many years ago, I had a roommate, and he became uh, an author. He wrote a book, and in the book, he was talking about communication, and please don't tell him that I'm disagreeing with him. Oh, wait a minute. I disagreed with him on almost everything all the time. Our North Carolina friends here, I'm sorry. He was a Tar Heel fan. Psst. Do I need to say anything more than that? All right. But he, in the book, he had a practical strategy, and I thought, well, that's a good idea. It says, put on a, a, a rubber band, and then any time you're tempted to say something wrong, you just snap your wrist with that rubber band. You know what? You can't get a thing done if you're snapping your wrist all day long with a rubber band. Because it takes more than just a, a good little strategy. So it's a matter of the heart. Let me read to you what your heart is like now, we know that as a Christian, we've been redeemed, we've been given a new nature. But Paul often talked about, now you've got to be careful because there still is within you that old nature, and unless you're filled with the Holy Spirit, unless you're empowered by God's Spirit, what's in your old heart will show up in your life. So, so take a look. If you're feeling good about yourself, this should fix it. Galatians chapter 5 verse 16 <clears throat> Paul said but I say let the Holy Spirit guide your lives then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves the sinful nature wants to do evil which is just the opposite of what the spirit wants and the spirit gives us gives us desires that are the opposite of the sinful nature desires these two forces are constantly fighting each other, so you are not free to carry out your good intentions. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outburst of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Whoa, that is what is in the heart. I saw this in Logan Sport at one of our churches. It was something like this. It says, don't trust your tongue to a bitter heart. 
Well, I left a blank there because we can put in there, don't trust your tongue to an angry heart. Don't trust your tongue to a jealous heart. Don't trust your tongue to a... And the list goes on and on. We've got to be very, very careful. Let's say you have brand new carpeting in your house. And then you decide to have a party for teenagers. That's a bad decision. And you wanted to be a good host, so what you've done is you've put up here in, the, in this big banquet room you have, you've put up a, a soda fountain. And, I mean, it's great because, I mean, the kids can come in and they can mix in all the different drinks and they've got all the different flavors. And, you know, I mean, how many of us would mix our sodas up and have what we called a suicide, you know, not knowing what was in it? So you've got it up there. I mean, it's a great party. You've got chips. You've got dip. I mean, everything. But, but the main thing is everybody can go up and make their own soda out of this big soda bar that you've put up. And now it's busy, let's say that you're not a Baptist and you've had a party at your house and there's dancing. <laughs> and the kids are dancing around and they're moving around and they're bumping into each other. You know what's happening to your carpet, don't you? <laughs> Spots are everywhere, it's everywhere, everywhere. Because it's inevitable. Let me say this, you were dumb to have a party in your new room with carpet, new carpet. You're dumb, you deserve the mess, all right? But if you did that, when the party was over, you could know what every combination of the soda drinks were. You would especially know where grape was, where cream soda was. Because it's inevitable that in a party like that with teenagers, that when they bump each other, what's in the cup is going to splash out. Well, that's an illustration that's been given time and time again because it talks about what is in our hearts while we're living this busy life where we're interacting with people all the time. When in life we bump into each other, what's in the heart splashes out through our mouth. Because we have an opportunity to be a testimony to a lost world, it's important for us to learn this. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. So turn your notes over and let's talk about wounds, words rather that wound, words that hurt each other. This is not intended to be a comfortable, pleasant experience. Sorry, guests, that you're here. I mean, this is intended to be like going to the dentist. Oh, nobody likes it. Where they open your mouth, put the bright light right in your eyes, and you can still see below a tray full of shiny, pointed things. And now they're going to go through and clean your teeth and start touching any spot that is suspicious. And you know what happens. Does this hurt? You know, and I don't know if a dentist knows that you probably just said something very ugly to them. Because you know, if you've ever had that happen, when they push the soft spot, it hits a nerve or, it, oh my, it, it makes something come out. Well, this is intended to be an experience like that. Only five pointy things that I'm going to poke around in your heart with and to see if you say, ouch. To see if God would say, now listen, this is an area that you need to work on. In fact, it's an area that you need to surrender. Because we just read that our good intentions don't do us any good at all. So let's start. James chapter 3, verse 5, second half of the verse is where our text begins today. But a tiny spark can set a great forest on fire. And among all the parts of the body, the tongue is a flame of fire. It is a whole world of wickedness, corrupting your entire body. It can set your whole life on fire, for it is set on fire by hell itself. Wow, what a warning. Every word I give has potential 
Proverbs says that my words have the potential to give a life or to give death. The wrong words can be the words that encourage somebody and puts them into a new direction of life. But my words can also discourage somebody and bring them down. So, what about these words that wound? James says be very careful. Be very careful with your tongue. So let's take a look. Number one, degrading words. Degrading words. Now, Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18 is a really good verse. In fact, it's so good that I've put it on the paper twice. I proofread my paper, printed out everything, reviewed it last night, and I thought, I put the wrong verse on the wrong number. I've never done that before. You know that, right? So let me read to you the verse that goes with degrading words, inappropriate words, words that are thoughtless, critical, coarse, just dumb. How many times have you ever said something and as soon as it was out of your mouth, you thought to yourself, I can't believe I just said that. That was so inappropriate. Here's the word from Proverbs 17, 27, and 28. So if you'll scratch out, or at least put on the side there, the verse, Proverbs 20, or 17, 27, and 28. Let me read these words to you. A truly wise person uses few words. A person with understanding is even tempered. Even fools are thought wise when they keep silent. With their mouth shut, they seem intelligent. You see, we've got to be careful with every word, especially degrading words. Where in our conversation, we've just said the wrong thing. Now, all of these will overlap, and you'll see that as we go through it. But let's look at the next one and, and slowly start to build the, the, um, the word picture here. Number two, demanding words. These are angry words. Oh my, we know what those words are like. They come out before you know it. They don't just come out, they don't seep out, they explode. They shoot across to the other person. Demanding words, angry words. These are words when we are arguing, accusing. Words where we are cursing. Here's, a, here's the Proverbs, Proverbs 29, 22. Uh, an angry person starts fights. A hot-tempered person commits all kinds of sins. So always very careful to look around and make sure that the visitor you're talking about didn't show up for church, all right? So that person is not here. Rusty and I were going to help Corey Halterman get ready for a move. And we were on the highway. We were leaving Logan Sport. And we saw a car stop up in front of us a little bit and saw a door fly open, you know, when the doors fly open, and a young woman jumped out of there, and she was yelling and screaming and pointing, and you could see behind the glass, somebody else was doing the same. All of a sudden, the car took off, she's left in the middle of the road, and she's running down the road after the car, and I said to Rusty, you know, Rusty, be ready to be a hero, at almost 62, there's not much hero left in me, you know, so I said, be ready to be a hero, and we watched it all happen in the mirror, and, and sure enough, the car stopped, she ran up, the guy threw open his door, they yelled at each other, they pointed, they pointed, opened the trunk, and I thought, oh no, what's going to happen? Rusty, I'm praying for you, brother. <laughs> and all of a sudden, they switch places, get in the car, and drive off. Now, I don't know what happened. But I know this, there were words exchanged that hurt that relationship in such a way that they will never fully recover from it. These were demanding words, angry words, harsh words. Degrading words, demanding words. Number three, demeaning words. Demeaning words, words that condemn, 
Words that are critical, that are meant to level somebody, knock them down. These can even be preachy words where you act like you're so much better than anybody else. Here's the Proverbs associated with these kinds of wounding words. Proverbs 12, 18, some people make cutting remarks, but the words of the wise bring healing. Can you imagine what this election cycle would begin to sound like if somebody would be in charge enough to say, you have to say nice things about each other. Oh, isn't it terrible, and I'm not picking any candidate, but isn't it terrible to see where it becomes a contest to see how mean, how rude you can be to each other. Criticizing one another's characters and past performance and on and on it goes. Well, we may have to put up with it during this election cycle, but dad, this should not be you with your children. Mom, this should not be you with your children or your husband, and obviously going in the other direction as well. We should not be making cutting remarks that are intended to bring other people down, to give them what they deserve, to keep them humble in case they ever thought they were going to change. Our words remind them that we're still disappointed. Demeaning words. Number four, destructive words. Destructive words, slandering words, you know, rumors, gossiping, discrediting, belittling, Facebooking. Oh, I'm sorry, did I put that right in the middle of all that? Because isn't that what's happening on many of the Facebook accounts? Where people are saying what they think they know. They're making accusations in front of the whole world that they would never make to somebody's face. And I think Facebook is a wonderful thing. My wife, God bless her, is a Facebook stalker. She doesn't put anything on Facebook, but she knows what you've put on Facebook. I mean, there's nothing wrong. I mean, Facebook is a great thing. I mean, on Facebook, we found out that my niece was coming to visit with her husband and two of his brothers. On Facebook, they couldn't see my reaction. (laughs) That's not true. We're gonna feed them and everything, all right? But you know what I'm saying about so much of what you see on Facebook and you think, how can anybody even say that? How can they even bring that kind of a conversation into the public forum? These words are destructive. They have the potential to destroy somebody's character, reputation. They have the potential to destroy relationships. Number five, deceitful words. Oh, under destructive words, it says this, fire goes out without wood and quarrels disappear when gossip stops. Don't be involved in that. If somebody tells you something that is just so good that you've got to share it, don't share it if it's negative, if it's critical. Don't share it. And pretty soon the rumor will die. Number five then, deceitful words. These are untruthful words. That's a nice way of saying lying, false accusations, insincere words. Words that are false in their application. Because you can say the truth and say it in such a way that it creates a whole different picture. We've been a part of that. Receiving and I'm afraid probably giving. So let's be careful. Listen to what it says in Proverbs 25. Telling lies about others is as harmful as hitting them with an axe. Wounding them with a sword or shooting them with a sharp arrow. In our day and time, we would say, and shooting them with a bullet. I mean, that's how harmful these words are. Now, all of that brings us to this conclusion, right back to where we started. 
James is talking about the way we communicate with each other. We understand that the tongue has potential for so much damage, so much destruction because of what is in the heart. In the conclusion, let me share this before I give a couple of closing comments. But the words you speak from the heart, that's what defiles you. I told you this was a, an exam, a dental exam, or you're in the doctor's office is he poking, saying, does this hurt, does this hurt, does this hurt? In the course of these few minutes, have you thought to yourself, oh, I can't believe I just thought about what I said to so-and-so. Oh, I should. Why did I do that? I should have known better. If that is the work of the Holy Spirit prompting you to make right what you did that was wrong, then do not resist and fight against that. Instead, this week, write the letter, send the note, make the call, go to that person and say, you know what, the Lord revealed to me on last Thursday what I said was completely wrong and inappropriate, and I'm sure that it hurt you. I can't take the words back, but I want to offer a sincere apology. If you're thinking of situations where your words have done these kinds of things, they've degraded, or they were demanding, they were demeaning, destructive, deceitful, then guess what, Christian? Your obligation is to go make it right with a sincere apology. We're talking about the heart. It's so important for every Christian to start every day the same way. And that is to say, Father, before I get out of bed, it's my determination to do your will. Today, I want to do your will on earth as it is in heaven. Father, I know I cannot do that on my own. I have failed so many times I couldn't begin to count. What I'm asking is for your Holy Spirit to empower me, to equip me, to make me ready to do your will. Father, that's how I determine to start the day. Now we just read of all the ugly things that are in our hearts and how they will spill out, they'll splash out if we get bumped during the day. But if the Holy Spirit has his way, these are the qualities that will spill out. These are the, the attributes that will splash out on others. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. What a wonderful testimony it would be if this week people walked away from our conversation. They walked away and they said, wow, that was so encouraging. I am so glad I bumped into them today. I hope to see them soon. It was good to be with them. Christian, I believe James is trying to teach us that if we'll understand the potential for good and bad that we keep in our mouth with this little tongue, this little member, that we can have a tremendous opportunity to do the Father's business. Because there's somebody out there this week that will be willing to listen to a part of our 175,000 word total. What tremendous good could come if it came like a gentle rain on this community? Oh, I know some of you farmers are aching for a gentle rain that would last nearly a week. Well, listen, there are people out there who need to be touched by Christians who are filled with the Holy Spirit, whose words are reflecting love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, faithfulness, self-control. 
Because here's what it says, from a wise mind, and, act, and I'm sorry, Proverbs 16, 23, from a wise mind comes wise speech, and the words of the wise are persuasive. Hey, would you close your eyes and bow your heads? <clears throat> we'll have a time where the Lord, I hope, will challenge you as he has me through this message. I'm not going to ask that you raise your hand or do anything. No, that's between you and the Lord. But really, think about this next week. Are you ready right now to say, Father, I'm determined to do your will. I want to serve the Savior. I know I can't. I need to be empowered by your Holy Spirit. And Lord, I'm asking that you would use every single one of my words to bless others to exhort, even to correct, but with a good attitude, a right attitude, to love people, to lift up people. What an opportunity we have for this next week. Do you know what? By this time next week, marriages could be better if we would just give attention like this to our tongue. Relationships could be restored. The workplace could be a better place if Christians would give the Lord complete control over every member of our body, that all of it would be on the altar of sacrifice. Father, I'm asking that you would do that work. Lord, we know that it's a daily work. It's a moment-by-moment -moment work. It's a work that goes on for a lifetime. But Father, we need to be conscious of it today. Lord, it needs to be our focus for this next week, that you would use us to bless others, to encourage others, to do what needs to be done for the benefit of others, for your glory. Father, I ask for this always and only because we can come and pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, so much good happens in our great land it's obvious that we need to be faithful in praying. It does not matter your political persuasion. We'll never discuss that. But we need to be faithful in praying for this great land. And with that, I wish all of you, of course, the very best. Start to say Happy New Year. Happy Fourth of July. Got it. God bless you.